Welcome to Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, May 10th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. On Tuesday, Virgin Galactic said it's on track to send its first commercial flight into orbit in late June. That's good news for the company, which hasn't sent a crewed mission to space in nearly two years when its billionaire founder Richard Branson went up. It also reported a net loss last quarter of $159 million, but attributed it mostly to investments in developing its current and future fleet. Virgin Galactic has had plenty of delays and hurdles to deal with. So what comes next? Joining me to talk about it is WSJ Aerospace reporter Micah Maidenberg. Micah, Virgin Galactic says it's been working on upgrades and improvements to its vehicle system that uses a plane to carry a spaceship to the edge of space. Is there anything specific about that system that's caused delays? So you're right. The company's method for getting to the edge of space is not a rocket. They use this specialized space plane, so to speak, to carry up a spaceship, which unlatches from the plane and then shoots into the kind of edge of space and then glides back down, you know, from landings. And that's the kind of system that the company has been using and developing for many years at this point during that time, various dates for launching commercial service have come and go, and the company has faced some challenges with getting those vehicles set and proven out that they can carry people to the edge of space and bring them back safely. Now, of course, that's happened multiple times now, including with the flight with Richard Branson in 2021. But look, with space vehicle developments, delays are, are not uncommon, and Virgin Galactic dealt with a number of delays itself. Can you tell us about some of those delays? So, for example, and just as a reminder to listeners, Richard Branson's Virgin Group founded Virgin Galactic almost 20 years ago in 2004. But during that time, as it worked itself and with partners to develop these vehicles, it did face challenges. An engine test, for example, in 2013 resulted in an explosion. No one was hurt in that, but that's something they had to deal with. And then the following year in 2014, During a test flight conducted by an outside company, one of the prototype spaceships that was being used at the time broke apart and crashed after a co-pilot later made what a safety official said was an error, and that killed him. That also delayed kind of development and the company's plans to sort of launch commercial service, which they say, you know, years on now that they're poised to do by the end of June. What has Virgin said about all these technical problems? Well, Virgin, since the Richard Branson flight in July of 2021, has been pretty heads down and focused on bolstering the plane that it has right now, the carrier plane, and the one spaceship that it has. It says it's taken a number of steps to sort of upgrade those, strengthen them, prepare them for a more regular, you know, flight cadence. Virgin Galactic has already sold some tickets to space tourists. How are they reacting to all of these delays? The company has talked about this reservation list that it's had for a number of years now. And, you know, look, some of those passengers have aged out, you know, they have for one reason or the other decided to move on. For example, I spoke to a retiree who told me he had basically reserved a seat in 2007, and it hoped to be flying within five years from that time. He didn't get to make it. He decided to drop out in 2018, 11 years after he had reserved that seat because of a medical condition. Now, the company has said that at the end of last year, they had around 800 reservations, and some customers who dropped off last year were generally backfilled. So, It'll be interesting to see what the reservation list looks like, how big it is, but clearly some customers have missed their chance to fly. I want to ask you about a separate but maybe related issue. Virgin Orbit, Branson's other space company, filed for bankruptcy last month. Can you just remind listeners who maybe heard about that, how these two companies relate, and if the issues that Virgin Orbit is facing will have any impact on Virgin Galactic? Yeah. First thing to know is that Virgin Galactic and Virgin Orbit are completely separate companies. They have different management teams, different markets that they're targeting, different employee bases, different technology. However, they do share a common history. 2017, Virgin Galactic officials announced that Virgin Orbit would spin out and develop a small satellite launching system 
to deploy small satellites into orbit. And that would be a separate company that would be distinct from Virgin Galactic. Virgin Orbit has, as you mentioned, faced some challenges and filed for bankruptcy. The company wasn't able to execute a launch recently from the UK. And the small satellite launching market is very tough. You know, a lot of like launch executives have talked about only one or two small sat launchers making it. The general trend in rocket development has been to develop larger vehicles that can take more satellites to orbit at once. And in that context, Virgin Orbit's business model face some real, real difficulties and real challenges. We've been talking about Virgin Galactic. Are the problems that they're facing being dealt with by any of their private space competitors? For example, Blue Origin, which was started by Jeff Bezos. Yeah, look, the summer of 2021 was a very high profile kind of moment for, call it suborbital private space flights. Richard Branson made it there, Jeff Bezos got there on Blue Origin. And it's always been seen as a, a very nascent industry. This has never happened before. For decades, human spaceflight has been the domain of government space agencies. And these companies saw their suborbital space flights as a way to change that dynamic. Both have had challenges, you know, since those flights. In September of last year, Blue Origin, during a research mission without anybody on board, experienced an engine nozzle failure that destroyed one of its vehicles. And the company has not flown anyone to space since that time. And of course, Virgin Galactic has not conducted any any space flights since taking Mr. Branson and others up almost two years ago. So people say all the time, space is hard, delays are common, and both Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin have faced some challenges in building out the businesses they're hoping to build out. That's our reporter, Micah Maidenberg. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thanks so much, Zoe. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. For more tech stories, head over to our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.